Right, well, we're delighted to welcome uh, our guest on the show tonight. It's the 1903's chairperson, Orla Crilly. Orla, you're very, very welcome to the podcast. How are you? Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Yeah, look, Orla, I, th I think anyone watching um, social media over the past few days would see the 1903 club pop up with a, with a bit of call to action. But before we kind of get to that, just maybe just a quick update for, for for everybody on what the 1903 have been up to of late you know we we, we all saw the crossbar challenge and 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 bits and pieces but on match day you, you guys can be quite busy am i right yeah do you see how close i was in the crossbar challenge <laughs> <laughs> just stick right under i think i was the only was i the only woman to, to take on the challenge um yeah it's busy i mean i think people might may think that we've been quiet up to this point but let me tell you we have been just so busy in, in the background um a few changes in the lineup of the committee so myself as chair we have frank carolyn in there as vice uh, chair and media jimmy McEnany also assisting him um connor waters is our chief financial officer damien Mackin is still at treasurer's post and jay mckeown is is in uh, as secretary as well. Uh, we have one more fundraising officer position um, that will be announced in, in due course. We are nearly, we have been very busy in the background, so we are nearly ready to launch uh, phase one of our plans. So basically, um, you know, there are many factions, I said, um, in Oriel Park, and we want to kind of pull in as many people together in under the one umbrella and be kind of a central point for all those ideas and opinions and to be able to listen to all the different factions yeah. in Oriel Park. So uh, with that in mind, um, we've been out uh, signing up lots of businesses to work with the 1903. So we have nearly 60 businesses um, linked up with us now and it's, we add to it every week. So, you know, there'll be 100, 100 plus. And these are all businesses in Dundalk. So we have changed the, the membership card. There's a small plastic wallet size card. The last one was a little bit kind of oversized. So this will kind of, this will fit in neatly right behind your season ticket uh, for Oriel. Uh, and when you go around town, they are, there is every at every point when you go to buy something or use a service, there is a deal or a discount. So we are putting thousands of euro um, worth of deals and discounts back into the hands of everyone that signs up for the 1903. Um, and that's only going to cost you 24 euro for the year. So it's going to make it an absolute no brainer uh, for people to sign up and get their 1903 card. Um, but not just with the football club as well. You know, we're part of a big town and I'd really like to pull in everybody right across the town. So it won't be just about the, the football club membership card. It'll be the 19, 1903 card. You know, there is absolutely everything in there um, from 10 percent off Crown Plaza hotels uh, right across the world. Yeah. There's um, physios, chiropractors, uh, mini athletics, barbers, men's clothes shops, beauticians for the ladies, ladies clothes shops. Um, restaurants, takeaways, coffee shops, um, everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, gift and art gallery, car, um, the car, uh, motor factors, um, mm -hmm. mechanics in town. So it's really, really go worth a lot of money. So that was what I initially thought would be the best way to bring as many people as possible, you know, make them an offer they can't refuse. <laughs> 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 so that's phase one. Um, we're very ready to launch. We have booklets that were, we, the plastic cards were all printed out. Uh, last night, Frank was busy around in his house uh, doing that. So everyone will be getting them very shortly. Um, we'd like them maybe just to save on postage costs. We will have them at Oriel um, on the next match day, with a home day, which is not till the 30th. So a bit of a wait, but they will be they're mm -hmm. available. And everyone who signed up gets the new card. And anyone who wants to sign up will get the new card. Um, and, you know, you can, if you know any of the committee members as well, just just get in touch with them. If you if you want to get your hands on it a little bit quicker and start <laughs> start making some, <laughs> start making a profit out of it. Um, so that's phase one. Phase two coming after that is all about the fundraising aspect. So I think okay. when you have brought everyone together, then that's the best way to maximize your chances of of um, fundraising for the club yeah, and also linking into businesses. So, you know, it's a case of the more the merrier. So um, phase two will be asking all those people that do sign up how they can fundraise for the club. It won't be, you know, it will be a case of maybe a GoFundMe 
page combined mm-hmm. with asking people to go out and say, you know, organize an event and put money, you know, put money towards the pot. Um, yeah. I was thinking I might get all the podcasters, just get store up a bit of rivalry between us all and say, right, which of the podcast is going to raise the money and set, set, <laughs> set you all a challenge. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Would you be yeah. up for that? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, deadly. You're in. I, I thought we were going to say there, there, there's um, a challenge match coming here. And I said, ah, Steph McKevitt, love this now. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to get people going you know if you can make things fun if you can do things in a fun way you know none of this as i said to the committee starting out you know i said there will be a, there will be hard work and there'll be graph put in yes. but i said i want to take the pressure off all you guys i want to take on the bigger part of the you know of, of doing stuff myself now they're they're, they're all getting really stuck in now because we're close to to launching um but, you know, yeah, so I, I said, I want you to have fun. You know, I don't want you to get burnt out and saying in six months mm-hmm. time, oh, I'm stepping away. They're all really, really great people. And I just want nothing, nothing in life. Sure. Even when you're doing good and trying to help people, it shouldn't be a task. Should It shouldn't be a chore. You know, let's exactly. have, let's all have fun and, you know, push this in the right direction. Um, I'd like to kind of get a big thermometer upside outside of Oriel. So that's very visual when you walk up and you're going, right, it's that, you know, five yeah. grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, um, and people will really be able to see it going up. But I think that kind of, it's encouraging, isn't it? Like if you're trying to lose weight and you look down every day and you see, you see you're moving in the right direction, yeah. it's for the on. And so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's our ethos. We're applying it to, to fundraising for oil. Mm-hmm. After that, uh, we will ask, you know, it's not about a committee deciding where the money goes. It will be down to the fans. So how do you want to spend the money in Oriel? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I suppose a lot of people think the big things are a new, a new stand, um, you know, putting roofs over the the, the um, way end um, and the, the family section, maybe doing up the, you know, inside facilities. The ethos of the 1983 is all about improving the match day experience for the fans. Yeah. So, you know, the business of Oriel isn't our business, but when you, from walking up the road to walking in, how you enjoy everything about being a dog supporter, that's that's where we come in. That's what we should be improving for you and whatever format that may take, you know, you tell us basically. Um, yeah. That's the plan. But, you know, um, you know, I mean, obviously the facilities in, in Oriel are poor. We're falling behind. You look around the country and you see new stands going up here, another new stand mm-hmm. announced, you know, all over. And you just see us stuck and nothing happening and nothing has happened for ages. And people are like, oh, you know, why? I mean, I see Stat Sports as being kind of the caretakers of the club. I think mm-hmm. that um, I'm not sure they really come in. I don't really, you know, know, but I don't think they come in to invest and throw loads of money into the club. I think they just come in to steady the boat after after peak six. Peak six. Um, yeah. And we should be, you know, kind of great, grateful for that and their involvement there. Um, and now we, as a fan base, have to figure out how we can, you know, push our club forward. And I see it as being the fans' club. We're the go- ones that are sitting in it. We're the ones using facilities. It doesn't matter who's in the boardroom. It's about no. us at the end of the day and our kids and our grandkids. So when you fundraise, you're not just going, oh, that that would be nice. Think about your match day experience. And for the next 50 or 60 years, you know, mm-hmm. all, all your family going forward. So if that kind of helps you to push you know, to double your fundraising efforts, <laughs> go with it. But, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, it's interesting. The FAI have thrown out, you know, this big package this week. And, yeah. you know, spectacular. It and it's ambitious. Million is, is a hell of a package. Like, yeah, it's ambitious. Yeah, it is ambitious. What is it for League of Ireland? It's 340, uh, the 800 million. It's 340 yeah. for League of Ireland. And I mean, if Dundalk aren't top of that list to be getting either the 6,000 seater stadium or the um, the 10 to 20 seat, seater mm-hmm. stadium, like there's something seriously wrong <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think I think we one have of those to things, though, like, it, it, you know, it, this seems like one of those moments where the club now needs to get ducks in a row because we've yes. often said that we haven't been in a situation where we can draw down funds or only be able to pull down the minimum funds on it. Like we now know that this is going to government. The window is now open. So let's get ducks in a row, whatever way that we need to be to be able to draw down funds to get local TDs on board now with us as well, driving this plan, getting this. Like, you know, we've seen Lao GA really, 
you know, rally around um, for the county stadium. We need to be doing the exact same right now for this. This is yeah. this could potentially be a massive turning point for football in this country. And how do we maximize yeah, and that? I read we the can't stat be about... behind legislation somewhere, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And I read the stat about how GAA had um, the amount of funding they had drawn down was twice or three times the amount mm -hmm. that football had drawn down. I mean... Why, why should there be such a discrepancy there? If there's money there, why aren't we organised enough to be able to say, right, let's do this? The whole thing of like them not, Dundalk not owning the ground and stuff like that, it's a load of balls, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. You know, we have a 70-odd year lease. There's nothing stopping, there's nothing yeah. about that that stops us, you know, um, uh, developing the ground and pushing forward. It was the same when the YDC um, was that being built. Okay, yeah. It was, the same, it was um, the same arrangement back then. So, like, it didn't stop us getting the YDC built and the new yeah. shed built. Well, that shouldn't, it should never be a barrier um, for us at all. You know, we just need to organize ourselves in the right way that we are able to avail of any sporting funds or grants that actually can get drawn down. I think that's the, the yeah, key. And the sports capital kind of grants are massive. The lotto grants are massive. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's some of the stuff that was mentioned. And the FAI, in their report, they said um, they wanted 60% of government funding, 20% of um, other bodies, such as councils and stuff like that. And 20% was coming for, for the FAI. Um, mm. You know, it may require that there's... Um, a restructuring of the internal mechanisms of uh, of the football club so um yeah. you know something you know a trust or, or something to that to that yes. to, to that sort of thing um so we can avail of more of that grants because it may be difficult if the um clubs are in private ownership so i think mm -hmm. as a 1903 you know we'd like to be part of the conversation i keep saying <laughs> You know, I'm not privy to what happens in the boardroom, but as I keep saying to Martin, um, we want to be part of the conversation. You know, he has said to me, you know, whatever decisions have been made, um, the fans will will be making those decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just hope they had a planning meeting this week with the council, and it was all about how, um, what, what, what kind of plans that the council could support in relation to Oriel. So I mean. Yeah. I think that's a conversation that could have been had many years ago, but I'm glad it's happening yeah. now. Exactly. Um, and I suppose when you have those conversations and you can get feedback from the council, that's your framework for for moving on. But, you know, mm -hmm. there's great, there's brilliant people up there in the club and um, mm -hmm. and they're sm a small group and there there's a lot of work to be done and it's hard on a, on a small group of people. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, we have a passionate fan base that want to help. So I do hope the club kind of come to the fans and say right you know what 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 can you do for us how can we help what you know let's drive this thing forward together you know yeah yeah and i think i think the important thing as well on that or is you know the the fai strategic plan it's a 15-year plan as well towards i think what you're talking about right now is is the here and now like what what you guys are doing to raise funds could actually impact the next few games for people's experience if you know what i mean like small little changes that you guys are fundraising from can, can actually have that small effect and it, while the government is sorting the bigger things it'd be great if us as fans could come together and start building from the bot from the bottom up so when if if and when let's just say there is an opportunity to draw down bigger funds they can go into bigger plans because we've looked after a lot of the other stuff would be great. Like I think on, on the night you were elected, I mean, we, we had a conversation about, you know, the toilet blocks, for instance, you know, improving. The, and I know you guys have done a lot even for, for, for the ladies' toilets in the ground and stuff like that, with, you know, providing things and stuff like that. Like that's little, yeah. small, little gestures like that. It's amazing. Like, it is a small touches. Um, since I came in to, as chairperson, I go up to Oriel um, before every home game and clean the toilets with with the lads, you know, because everyone's everyone's running around clean and doing bits, setting things up, mm -hmm. you know, so they just need extra hands. So just went in and started scrubbing and cleaning. <laughs> Very big bottle of bleach. Um, <laughs> And I do that for every home game just to just to give everyone. And let me tell you, Martin and his wife and John and everyone, they're all there. Everyone's running around. Yeah. Robert loves on. Everyone's everyone's pulling together, clean and stuff like that. And you can see it's raised. Um, you know, we started putting in um, sanitary boxes and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, into the ladies toilets um, uh, as well. Um, uh, we'll be doing a bit more painting in them this week as well. Um, 
but yeah it's been interesting to kind of get up and help help out around the place um it gives you a different insight you, you can't you can't affect change from the outside you can't affect it from standing on the, on the carrick road going in no. or you know making demands uh, uh, <laughs> of a board to say i want the answer to this i want the answer to that and that's not how that's not that's not how you you know you can affect progress so you need to get in and rub shoulders of people and work side by side them to see the realities of their world and the realities of their job so if you can't understand that how can you how can you really help the situation you know yeah and you have to build trust and you have to build relationships with people so i hope that you know we've done that in the 1903 over the last um couple of months and that that's something that can progress in the years moving forward you know, it was interesting. I was at work today and I was driving through Fibsborough and I just seen they have the Bohemian Way at the side of the church and along the fag poles, they've yeah. picked out different members of the community who have a massive impact on the club. And there's a little oh. flag on each of the lampposts as you walk towards the ground. And it's, you know, someone who's a grounds person, someone who is a member of the team, someone who volunteers with it. And I just think, isn't that a great wee gesture? And I think these are little things that we love it. You know, as a 1903, we could we could do these sort of things to, you know, in, in, you're talking about going around to the local community. And it reminds me very much of, you know, Shop Dundalk back years ago, which I was helping the club with uh, back then as well. So, you know, it, it definitely has that vibe and that really rallied a community around the club back then. And, and, and I feel like yeah, and it, going back into that again and, you know, little simple things like that from Bose and they were very good in the community. But imagine yeah. picking yeah. picking one or two support. Like we we've lost a lot of key supporters over the past while as well. Imagine for those families even to, to have something yeah. there. You know, well, a memory wall is on our list of things to do as well. I keep game. getting I keep forgetting to mention that, but we're trying to kind of, you know, it's hard to pick a place for a memory wall if you don't know the walls are going to be there in five years' time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we, true, what we true. said is that um, we could do, if we would do like a sort of plaque system that could be removable so that if, exactly. if, if we, you know, if it needs to be moved, then um, we do have that option. So the memory wall is is something, I think that's an important part of it. We have, um, yeah, we have lost a lot of fans and I think it's really um it's uh, important to honor honor all those people that came before us as well and were supporting um the club long before I even <laughs> even made me way into the dog tent. Um yeah. yeah, that's that's another thing as well. And you know, when people coming up, I've been bringing the business up to Oriel before the games and kind of treating mm-hmm. them and showing them around and just chatting to them, giving them an opportunity. I've kind of I've I've kind of handpicked the businesses that I brought in together so that there was okay. opportunities. Um, to kind of liaise with each other and to do a bit of networking in I thought in businesses I thought might might work together mm. as well. So, and it was like you know to say thank you for joining up with the nineteen oh three. Yeah, it's my dog sitting my head in here. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's been that's been really really nice. You know, even walking around town when you walk into places and there's you know I've met fans that I hadn't met before and big Dundalk fans or you know just me, even mention the club name where you say oh it's Dundalk FC. First of all, they kind of they look a bit worried because they think, oh, here she comes looking for money. And then um, <laughs> and when they hear the name, you can see the weight, uh, you know, uh, uh, the club has Absolutely. and um, the respect people have for that name. And um, and then when I say I'd like to promote your business for free through through the club, through our members club, and they're like, oh, gosh, you're grand. That sounds great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, so um, anyone I spoke to directly, it was all yeses. I think there was only two that didn't say yes because it just didn't wow. fit with their system and how they would roll it out. Okay. But everybody, everybody was on board, so it was good. It was a nice, it was a nice bit of work to be able to undertake. To be honest with you, in a, yeah. in a lot of ways, and um, it's going to be great for the fans as well. How, how many of the business? I'd be interested to know. Actually, we go up to Oriel Park quite often. Like the owners are members of the business. Was it someone there was their first time? Um, yeah, some of them it was, yeah. Wow. Um, so we still haven't That's had everyone up yet. Okay. So we've just had a few get a few games. So we're still we're still still bringing people up. Um, yeah, and brought their kids up and the kid as we we found right. there's a cleaning company, EK or cleaning, and they do outdoor cleaning. And he came up uh, mm-hmm. with a son who's in Peter Cherry's Academy. So he was all delighted to wave down at Peter <laughs> on the pitch. And we came down. I was just telling them different things about or that you mightn't, you know, if you were there a while, or you know, do you know who that is? Or pointing out mm-hmm. people as they were warming up and stuff like that, and just giving course, them yeah, the yeah. kind of an yeah, like a, a nicer experience. And the wee fella was delighted and he was loving it. And so so was the dad and that, you know. 
um yeah and then some people um oh god some people were like such massive fans i <laughs> there's a lady at the flower shop in Dundalk, and um she's i walked in i didn't know her before and there's loads of come on the town stuff all around her shop i was like mm, okay um, oh yeah i'm a bit <laughs> I'm a big Dundalk fan. And I was like, right, right. And we started talking and she was a big Sean Gannon fan. And I said, well, do you know what? Oh, wow. I've actually got one of Sean Gannon's boots uh, sitting on, on a shelf in my 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 Dundalk FC altar that I have upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got his boot there, the one the kids managed to get. I can't even remember what game was that at the end of the season. Sometime. And uh, I said, I'm going to bring it down to you. I think there's no but scattering dust on my shelf. It doesn't mean anything to me, but it'll mean a lot to you. So I did. I dropped oh, it wow. down to her. I think Gary Curtis was going to get it uh, signed for and stuff like that. And that that was oh, meaning wow. that meant the world to her. I love the people's stories. You know, some lady said mm. to me that, you know, you're at home if you're a single mom you're at home and when she walked into oriel and stood like in the middle of three thousand people and all the screaming she goes that's that's my peace my peace is in the middle of three thousand yeah, people roaring and shouting you know or the people who've lost families uh, you know along the way and what it means to them to go up i love the stories behind um of what people enjoy about oriel or how they became to you know start going to oriel you know, mm. um, I I love all I love that the, the humanity aspect of it. I really like you know. So I want to yeah. do a good job for everybody. I'll work my ass off, you know, <laughs> um, and we'll be doing that this weekend. So yes, um, look, you know, I wish I could doubt because. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I suppose, tell us a little bit about that. I, the one thing I meant to say, Orla, is like every time I be finish off my LOI TV interviews um, on the pitch, I often look up into the stand and I see there with your big black bag filling it full of rubbish uh, post-match. So I can, I can certainly say that you're not one for, for shrieking responsibility or rolling the sleeves up. But this weekend, we're just looking for a little bit extra help from, um, from some extra volunteers in, if you want to tell everyone about that. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm a foster parent and I have like 12 kids, and so I'd be dragging a load of them up to Oriel. Come on, bring it to Oriel. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, but you could do the litter pick at the end. <laughs> <They're> all... <laughs> Excuse me, dogs jumping in here. Um, so Hello. yeah, they're yeah, they're starting to ruin the day. <laughs> um, but this week, yeah, we we are looking for extra help. Um, the 1903 have been into Terry Kelly. We've got a load of paint, and it's just about just giving kind of a little bit of a facelift to the areas around Oriel. So the wall, basically, mm -hmm. you know, the kids all be jumping up and down on the wall and sitting and bums all around the whole the whole edge of it there. Uh, uh, my kids included, and mm -hmm. it just needs it just needs a refresher. You know, it's a job that can yeah. be done yearly, and that maybe the bottom of the stand and some parts of the tiled blocks outside as well. So we'd mm -hmm. love if um, some people could come up. We're there Saturday from 10 to 3. Fingers crossed that the weather is nice. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're fit and able to pick up a paintbrush, bring your old clothes and everything else will be provided for you there. So it would be great to see as many as possible Perfect. so we it's, can find a chance just through. for people, I suppose, who, you know, who, who don't normally get involved. Here's, here's a small little opportunity to start, you know, getting in and getting involved with the yeah. club, you know. And, and I, I often find Dundee Football Club is great at finding these people. Um, people always want to get involved, but it's just knowing how to get involved sometimes can be can be the thing. So I think this is a perfect opportunity for people maybe yeah. just to start. Absolutely, yeah. And as I was going around to all the businesses as well and talking to people and, you know, I said to every, everybody I passed, um, could you give me two hours uh, of your time over the season, uh, um, you know, volunteering? And nobody would say in the space of, 365 days of the year that they couldn't give you two two hours you know um so i said right i said grant i said i'll put you on my list and there'll be a whatsapp group if you're if it's okay to add you uh, um down the road so now this week we create the whatsapp group um it's it's only myself that can put in the messages into it so that you're not gonna going off every 10 seconds with all like these 80 people kind of Tone in their tuppence worth um yeah. so it'll be used in the future we we rolled it out for for this week to ask people to come up to oriel and stuff down the line as well so even if you think you can't make it saturday don't leave the group <laughs> um there might be something in a couple of weeks where we have you know a bit more to do or that we're going to start rolling out you know some of the fundraising events um over you know in the future and that might be 
something that you you you, you might be more keen on or have a bit more mm-hmm. time to spare at a different point in the year um so hang in hang into the group so there there, there might be uh, <laughs> your club needs you um <laughs> yeah that we can you know so at some point people can give a hand brilliant so like if we if we even take saturday for instance is it a thing where people just turn up or should they contact yourselves first or what's the best way yeah um if they're not if i haven't already nailed them down in the, in the whatsapp group they can they can uh come onto like facebook or or the Quilly on facebook or mm-hmm. um onto the um just find my number i think it's on the facebook page and message me directly um i think the whole town must have my number at this stage <laughs> uh, and just say yeah because it just gave me i have i have bought all the paint and i went out and got a load of rollers and stuff today but just in case 20 right. people turn up but i would go oh, i'll just run and get more rollers or whatever um mm-hmm. yeah just give me the it was probably about 10 or so i'd love to have 15 people up there i think if we had 15 people we'd fly around at, you know, in a yeah. couple of hours, we said ten to three p.m. But you know, if you're, if you are, if you are good, <laughs> if you are workers, we might, you know, get it done in about three hours, maybe. You know. Brilliant. What time are you coming up at, Chris? Whenever the under tens are finished football match first thing in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and where are they playing? Uh, well, they're in town anyway, so it's not too bad. We're in town. Okay, that's grand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are all those stage, games? Don't you worry. It comes straight up. <laughs> yeah perfect well look orla um we really appreciate you popping on and uh, you know you're more than welcome to pop on any updates um from the 1903 as well you're always you're, everyone from the 93 is always more than welcome um on the podcast and fingers i'll get crossed. a nice photograph of your painting on saturday and we'll put it up on facebook there, there we go <laughs> there we go <laughs> that'll work perfect thank you so much for um, having me on well, the look, show. thanks appreciate so much it. and i know that we'll hear for you throughout the season we will indeed <laughs>